Hello po, ako ay uh, magre-react sa isang interview kay Dr. Benigno Agbayani dahil sa paggamit nila at pag-prescribe ng ivermectin. Uh, ang aking reaksyon ay base sa aking nalalaman ngayong araw na to. Uh, kailangan po natin mag-research. Maaaring may mali ako sasasabihin ko. Importante na gumawa tayo ng sarili pag-aaral. Tayo ay tumingin sa mga news para ma-update tayo sa mga uh, bagong kaalaman. Ako si Dr. Roel Tarentino, isang surgical oncologist at uh, nagtuturo ako about COVID infection sa aking mga estudyante and some international seminars. Tingnan natin itong interview. We now go above and beyond the headlines with one of the doctors who gave away those prescriptions yesterday, Dr. Igi Agbayani. Dr. Agbayani, thank you very much for joining us this evening. So can we clarify po, uh, right away um, uh, the, the reason kung bakit uh, isa sa mga dahilan kung bakit napaka-controversial yung nangyari kahapon sa Quezon City is because of the prescriptions on uh, yung sinasabing bond. Uh, yun pong aking... Ang kaalaman dito sa bagay na ito, ito ay nangyari sa aming barangay sa Old Balara, Quezon City. Although hindi ko alam yung schedule na ito, sana nakapunta pala ako. Paper lang, tapos walang pangalan ng doktor, walang professional license number. Pag ikaw ay nagpe-prescribe, kung ikaw ay doktor, kung ikaw ay pasyente, makikita mo sa prescription pad, pangalan ng pasyente, edad, address, kung anong gamot ang nireseta, ilan at kung paano inumin, importante na ilagay ang pangalan ng doktor, ilagay ang lisensya ng doktor. Yung ibang reseta, hindi ko lang alam kung lahat ng reseta ay nagre-require ng PT at number. Yun ang tamang reseta. Hindi ka pwedeng maggawa ng reseta na walang pangalan, pirma lang at license number. Hindi ko lang alam kung inaalaw yun ngayon. Kasi hindi ganun ang turo sa amin. At walang ibang mga detalye. Pero kayo po, Doc uh, Agbayani, you um, uh, issued prescriptions uh, upon um, uh, seeing the patients and you did uh, uh, put your name, your license number, etc. Yes po, uh, Pia. Thank you for inviting me here. Uh, first of all, uh, we prescribe ivermectin and it's controversial because as you know uh, fda has been saying it is not a registered drug sa akin uh, kung ang isang drug ay very controversial i will doubt myself na ireseta ito yun ang para sa akin mahirap magreseta na hindi tayo sigurado sa efficacy Hindi tayo back up by science, mahirap. But uh, we can actually prescribe off-label and this came from the FDA itself. So there's nothing wrong. Uh, ang ibig sabihin ng off-label, mag ka ng isang gamot na hindi, na ibibigay mo sa isang disease na hindi pa recommended ng international guidelines. Example, Kunwari lang uh, off-label, pero malayong example to. Uh, you will give amoxicillin for a patients with for patients with tuberculosis. Yun, off-label yun. Pero ang alam ko sa ivermectin, kung magbibigay ka ng off-label prescription, ang pagkakaalam ko, kailangan ay nandun ka sa ospital kung saan may permit to issue these prescriptions with the uh, prescribing of label but of course they say unregistered drug should not be given however we prescribe doon po sa lugar na yon ang meron kami yung tinatawag na compounded uh, pag sinabing compounded ito ay ginawa ng isang pharmacist kunwari ang sabi ng pasyente kailangan ko ng 10 tablet yung pharmacist sa gagawa ng 10 tablet pero in this case nakita niya nakalagay siya sa foil hindi ako sigurado kung may pharmacist doon sa grupo nila kasi wala naman ako doon. Uh, kasi ganito yan, eh. kung compounded yan, mag-reseta ang doktor, ibibigay mo sa pharmacist, noon pa lang nila gagawin. Pero dito, 
na nakikita ko, naka-package ko yung, ano, yung ivermectin. Ivermectin. So that is legal. So I think they're just looking for loopholes. By the way, uh, kung gagawa ka ng gamot, importante na may permit or license to manufacture yan. Hindi ka pwede mag-manufacture ng gamot ng walang permit, walang license. It is not allowed just to try to harass us and things like that. Let's say, for example, they want to complain to the PRC. Did you know that one of the doctors there is part of the PRC board? Uh, hindi naman ibig sabihin na may PRC doon, eh, hindi na magre-reklamo ang mga tao. Kasi he is only one of the members of the board of the Philippine Regula Regulatory Commission, ba? PRC. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm mm -hmm. Okay, who, who is this doctor? Dr. Rafael Castillo is part of the board. So, are you telling me that you're going to complain okay. to him after? Okay. Uh, pwede, pwede mag-complain, not to him, but for the board. Tandaan nyo ha, pwede kang mag-complain sa board, hindi sa tao, kasi pag gumawa ng sulat, it's the board. Kaya pwede. He forgot to write his name. <laughs> prescription, you, you should put the name of the doctor. So, I also forgot to write ivermectin and the uh, That's also a foul. Kung nagbigay ka ng reseta na without ivermectin doon sa reseta, bakit makakatanggap ang pasyente ng ivermectin? Di ba? Hindi ko lang alam kung talaga nakalimot siya. Pero sinabi niya, mayroon daw siyang reseta na hindi nilagay ang ivermectin. The reason for that, sa dami po ng reseta na bigay ko, it's not ano, an excuse kasi bilang doktor, you should follow the correct writing of a prescription. By the way, hindi ko ho kaaway si Dr. Agbayani. Ano? I'm just reacting in this video. Hindi ko siya kilala personally. But I know that he is a well-respected orthopedic surgeon. I thought I put the ivermectin, but I wrote my... There, there he is. That's, that's a Dr. Rafi Castillo. Dr. Alan Landrito is my classmate in medical school in La Salle. He is part of the PRC board. He's a bad guy. He's a bad guy. He's a bad guy. And he's not going to be a bad guy. He's a bad guy. He's a bad guy. There's uh, Alan Landrito over there. Mm -hmm. Uh, so there are only four doctors, so so you couldn't probably make a mistake when, in terms of identifying doctors. So I, I think this is nitpicking. Mm -hmm. If you have nothing to say bad anymore, you can't you can't defend your position that ivermectin is a is a controversial drug. Na lang, as niya, we know it works, it's safe, and they will. Uh, it works. Walang ang guideline eh. Walang ang source na magsasabing it works. Kaya hindi matanggap ng WHO yung talagang strict guideline to prescribe ivermectin to uh, COVID patients or as a prophylaxis. We'll just find loopholes in our prescription. Yung pangalan na lang about using bond paper. I mean, my father, when... Pwede mag-prescribe sa, ano, sa bond paper. Basta complete lang yung laman. When he was in the, at home, a poor patient comes to the house, wala siyang, wala siyang uh, prescription pad, he'll get a bond paper, write his name, prescribe to a patient, because his duty comes first. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Dr. Igi, be before we go any further, can you tell us... Um... Nakita ko yung ano, waiver na makakatangga, makakatangga, makakatanggap ka ng ivermectin, pero yung mga side effects, parang... Ang pagkakaintindi ko ha, parang hindi mo sila pwedeng isu kung magkaroon ka ng side effect. Hindi namin ito ginagawa normally sa aming prescription. Although, sinasabi namin ang side effect pero yung waiver, misan ginagamit namin yan sa chemotherapy. Pero sa mga usual drugs, normally hindi. Uh, first, you know, just to make definition, uh, just to be clear about definitions, uh, can you define for us when you say uh, a while ago you said we can provide off? I'm sorry, we can prescribe off-label and then compounded ivermectin. Can you please define that first? Yeah, yeah, pa, pa, ma'am. Uh, compounded drug is uh, hindi po siya manufactured whole 
wholesale or in, in large numbers. Compounded drug is you have a prescription, you show it to a pharmacist, and then they will provide you with the uh, ito eh, itong aking uh, malaking tanong eh. Bakit nakaredy na yung capsule ng ivermectin? Kasi ang compounding, ang pagkakaalam ko, dapat gagawin pa lang ng pharmacist. Pero look at this ivermectin, naka-foil pa eh. Drug. So parang ano siya, more personal in a sense. Uh, unlike yung, uh, ano, you can buy not personalized pero nakakap nak, ano na eh, nakapackaging eh for for your whole family something like that so so iba po yung compounding so the FDA mm -hmm. allows that allows if with permit or license to compound sana meron silang license hoping meron silang license to compound oh and uh, as the other question again the, mm -hmm. <coughs> Yeah, yung, uh, can you define muna yung off-label na sinasabi ninyo? Oh yeah, off-label, okay. Off-label is for example, uh, ivermectin being a drug that was approved for uh, anti-parasitic. We will be using it for another disease, for example, COVID-19. Now, it is allowed as long as wala naman nagsasabi sa law that you cannot prescribe a certain drug versus... Uh, a... uh, ang law, it prescribes na... You can give only, you can give medicines for certain diseases back up by science. Yun ang pagkakaalam ko, pero niya, sa ivermectin mayroong special permit to certain people or certain hospital. Just in this case, this is not a hospital. Di ba ang pagkakaalam ko, tatlong hospital na yun nabigyan ng permit, but I don't consider this Barangay Hall or Barangay Area na conference area or basketball court to be a hospital. Certain disease. Mm -hmm. So that was made clear about two weeks ago by the mm -hmm. FDA itself. They said that off-label mm -hmm. uh, prescription is allowed. So I don't know what the fuss is all about. Ang, ang basa ko na lang po rito ay kung talo ka na sa, ano, sa, sa debate, sabihin mo na lang, uh, ang malaki mata mo. Gano'n na lang ito eh. Loophole looking na lang ito. Mm, okay. Personally, I think uh, may, there's a hook, loophole. Pero unless na masabi talaga ng gobyerno na walang loophole, I will believe. Embarrassing. Doctor I think Abayani, it's embarrassing. Oh, yes, you said... Okay. You said a while ago, we know it works, we know it's safe. However, you know, palaging lubulutang uh, sinasabi nga ng uh, authorities... Um, the, the clinical trials do not prove that uh, uh, it did uh, help reduce the symptoms of a, and I'm sorry, uh, those are not the exact words, no? pero in other words, in, in so many words, hindi siya naman talaga nakaka-cure no, ng COVID-19. Uh, there, there is no clinical trial that will prove that at this point in time. And then when, it, when you talk That's... about safety, um, of course, the, the first thing people think about is that, okay, so it's, it's, it's a... It's uh, it's it's not. It wasn't meant for human beings, but uh, they are being used for human beings now. Can, can you clarify that? And then I, I I want I need to go on to the next. Yeah, question. sure, sure. Uh, of course, it's for human beings. Ivermectin can be used for human beings. Correct. Three point seven billion doses have been given to humans over the. Yes, correct. Possibly correct. Because di ba nito ito tong data pero. It was used before. Past 35 years. It's been monitored by the WHO in terms of safety and considered one of the highest safety profile drugs in the world. Ganun po ka safe yan. Of 3.8 billion doses given, only 4,666 adverse events have been reported to the WHO. So it's so amazing that they would actually try to claim that this is not a safe drug. Now the Question of efficacy is the issue. Yes, correct. How sure are, are you that this is effective in preventing COVID-19 infection? They keep saying po, na wala raw po, kulang po yung study, ongoing. Now, they... Kulang studies. They probably haven't checked actually the number of... I checked studies that's been done and i will tell you now there are now over 
27 randomized controlled trials. Even the Department of Science and Technology said there's enough studies. This uh, magandang maano no? Uh, siguro kay Dr. Agben and next time dapat i-plus na yung mga studies. Kasi we are uh, claiming that there are studies pero ako wala din makita eh. Maaring hindi pa printed maaring ongoing trial pa rin. This was what they said three weeks ago. Adding more is good, but it doesn't mean you have to wait for the study in the field needs to be done. And they say na ongoing pa raw po. No, it's okay, not Dr. true. Dr. Bayani, is that... Uh, yung mga nakita kong trials, ongoing pa. Yun ang mga lagi nilang sinasight. Uh, sa akin muna, no, um, dapat lagi tayong maging mapanuri uh, ang mga sinasabi ng doktor pwede nating paniwalaan pero siyempre uh, based na lang yan sa respect mo, sa trust mo sa doktor ang doktor maaaring magkamali tao lang ang doktor maaaring ang paniniwala namin ay mali ang aming paggagamot ay maaaring magkamali kasi ang ang medicine hindi yan exact science ibig sabihin maaaring reseta namin ay eh, effective sa isang tao maaaring hindi effective sa ibang tao case to case basis yan kaya napakahirap ng medicine uh, sa next video ko itutuloy ko yung ano yung continuation ng interview na to for this moment yun lang ang aking reaction para at least maunawaan nating lahat, ako din mismo kailangan akong mag-research para maging tama ang mga sinasabi ko. Mas maging tama, di ba? Yun lang. Bye-bye.